Welcome to the a, a little mini tour that we're going to do here of the, of the Anahuac Bureau. The Anahuac Bureau was started in, uh, by me in 1995 uh, with just with the, some sketches and stuff. And, and tell people your name and where okay, so we're at the location. My name is Yolo Tapteca and I'm the, uh, the creator of the Anahuac Bureau here at Roosevelt High School in Boyle Heights. And we're going to run down to the mural and do a, a small tour. Content of the mural and how it started. So it, I started like I started in '95 doing some designs. Which, like, I, I, I was reached by a friend who wanted a, they wanted a mural that was um, gonna be behind this wall, but it was gonna only that mural was only gonna be about this this right here. So as I walked the wall and I looked at the wall and I go, this is the potential for a, a, a big mural. So eventually the mural became uh, what, I, what we know is one of the largest murals in, in Boyle Heights, East LA, or even LA, pertaining to the history of the, of, of, of the people of this continent, the, the, the Nicanclaca original people, original inhabitants of this continent. Of course, we have the, one of the largest murals is called, uh, uh, it's a, it's a Hongo Boss, I think it's uh, uh, Judy Baca who painted that mural, it's like a mile long. That was like a, uh, all these other people who, who basically worked on it. Uh, I want to say that I myself just worked on this mural. Um, you worked on this all by yourself? I pretty much all by myself. I had I did some have some help in, in, here and there, but for the most part, it was just me. So what I was going to say, it was like this whole mural, which is over 600 uh, feet in length, that was was done solely by me. I, I worked on the weekends and and overnight, and it took about six years. So here we are with the beginnings of, uh, you know, because that's the importance for me to teach the history of our, of our of people, of our ancestry, and how we, we, we came to be as a, as, a, as, a, as a nation, as a people, as a uh, as great as, as civilizations. And so we begin with the Olmec head here. The, the beginners, the, one of the, the oldest civilizations, at least the, what is known in Mexico, in, in Anahuac, Mexico, Central America. That's a civilization that gave us corn, uh, writing, uh, concept of zero, uh, uh, chili, squash, the architecture, the first arts, the, the first things that, that, that eventually developed and, and, and became better in, in what's called the Nahuac. Thanks to them, the, the Maya flourished, the Teotihuacan flourished, the, the Zapotec flourished, the other cultures of, 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 of uh, of uh, Manawak or Semanawak, which is, you know, the Semanawak means the entire. So, uh, uh, um, eventually, with people that I met in, 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 in uh, my uh, story named uh, Olintas Catipoca, who taught me that, you know, and showed me and directed me to the, the, that we have more history here and, and in our continent. So, then, if you're going to see the change uh, as far as the, the mural, the content of the mural. But uh, I want to point out that that's the founding of Tenochtitlan. Uh, it was an evil, you know, um, and the cac uh, on the cactus, devouring the snake, the serpent. And here we have some of the the pyramids or the structures that, you know, as you can see, they're they're kind of well, they kind of look like stone with no paint, no no really cut, no real color on it because there, there was actually uh, the the city was actually painted. They had they had uh, the, the cities of, of Anahuac I'm, I'm talking about. And they're supposed to represent actually the, the, the area, the Mayan area of Chichen Itza. And we go into this uh, area here where, where it's the uh, invasion of our continent by the Spaniards in, in, uh, uh, in 1492, the Europeans invaded uh, uh, Semanawak or Anahuac. And um, here's the, the battles that took place, in the place, the skirmishes that took place. Uh, uh, this is basically the beginning of the destruction of our of our civilizations under European uh, European hands, and uh, and here we have one of the areas that shows where uh, what I saw back then it was the, the so-called uh, uh, unification of two cultures, la unificación de dos culturas, which is what I've been told as as uh, as you know. As a Mexican growing up, and by your our grand, our grandparents, is like this whole uh, romanticized version of what the Spaniards really came here and 
and, and they're talking about how how we we marry with the Spaniards. Actually, they, it, it, there's more to that story. It actually, it, it was it was it was rape involved. The Spaniards were, did not come here as as uh, as trading for you know to trade. They didn't. They, they came here to, to basically do a lot of destruction, as you will see with uh, one of the one of the Holocaust took place here. Over, over 100 million was estimated of our ancestors, of our people, were, were massacred here on, on this continent. Not only by the Spaniards, but also by the French, the Portuguese, the, 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 the English, and so forth. But here you have uh, what I thought was the, the whole mestizaje, the whole mixture of, uh, of the Spanish and the Indian, which is, which is something that, that was pushed on, on, on our people, thinking that there was, this was like a a blending of so-called two cultures, which is which it was not. It was actually a rape, and a violation of our, of our of our of our people of of our um, of our ancestry. So here you have different aspects of what we, we you know. At one time, this this uh, person here, the idea was you know okay, so we we as a as a mestizo, now we have you know things that the Spaniards brought. But things that the indigenous person also gave us and, and so forth. That uh, obviously, for me, it became it became something that, uh, that wasn't that wasn't true after uh, true history. And I went back and I said, you know what? No, that uh, the Spaniards actually did this to us. 1492 marks the beginning of the destruction of 100 million human beings. And so I started putting other things. I started changing the. The, the so-called narrative that we've been given, the, I started, uh, you know, putting more truth to, to, to these lies that we've been fed, and uh, so I incorporated this idea of the Mexica, you know, we are Mexican, it's in the Nahuatl language, um, as you can see, the, the viewer is deteriorating because it's already been over 20 years since we're, we're, I finished the, the mural, so it needs repairs, and it needs, uh, um, it needs to be restored. How much funding would you need to restore this back to its glory? Uh, if it's, if it's, uh, I, I, honestly, I don't know, but I know it, it, it will require a lot of money just to just to keep up. Um, at least me as an artist out here, re restoring this, this this mural. I mean, just paints alone, you know, the, the paints are pretty expensive materials. Um, we come into the area of what's called the, the, the so-called Mexican independence of, 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 of Mexico, which is really wasn't an independence because the Criollos took control of, uh, uh, basically they co-opted the, this, this, this rebellion that our people wanted. They wanted to liberate themselves from the Criollos, the Spanish born in Mexico. And Miguel Hidalgo de Costilla, was, they took advantage of that and they said, okay, you know, we use these people to basically liberate ourselves from their own brothers, which are the, the peninsular, peninsula Spaniards. And this is the, the thing that we've been uh, always thinking that it, that it was actually a, a true thing that, that happened in Mexico, we got liberated from the Spanish. Well, the, yeah, the Spaniards left, but the Criollos was stood behind. And the Criollos stood in power. And this is, this is part of the, the whole thing with, with the struggle that went and ensued, and the, the, the fighting that took place to, to, to have some liber some actual liberation, but but did we really get liberation for the for the Europeans? Well, no, because the Jews still kept control, still kept power. Um, here, I, I, not in not in a historical sequence. genocide that took place, the, the outright invasion of, of our of our of our people. And, and this is this is really what this destroyed us as a people in, for future generations. Um, here we have an image of the of the Spaniards and the way they they 
they castigated our people were the ones that rebelled against them and like they marked them they branded them like if they were cattle usually what that was it was a, a g for for guerra for guerra or war and that was the the, the behavior that they took against people who rebelled on on the, on the spaniards so here we have like the the so-called loss of 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 uh, you know these seven territories or seven states that, 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 from Mexico and the invasion of the of the, of the Americas in 1848 and uh, many people just so it's kind of faded but you can see still, you see some corpses here that's what the, a lot of the hangings that took place here in what became uh, the U S Southwest after and that that uh, that was lynchings outright lynchings to, in order to dispossess some of our people from their land take control of the, of, the, of the ranches, property, what have you. Here we have the French, Benito Juarez. The, all this transformation that's taking place, and then you have the Mexican Revolution that, that, um, that were cost Mexico, or the Mexican people one million uh, um, human beings. Because they were trying to transform Mexico because the failures still controlled and manipulated and they had Mexico basically, well, the Mexican people under under their heel, and then their star, their starvation. It was just outright, uh, uh, basically, a, a virtual slavery, or in some cases, slavery. Um, so you have uh, Villa, Villa Madero. Um, many people consider him like uh, the Guaji. He was pretty much some of, uh, one of the initiators of the Mexican Revolution. Um, but also you have the revolutionaries who actually did the fighting, which is Villa in the northern part of Mexico, Zapata in the southern part. During all this uh, um, revolution that took place, things, ideas started to develop. Uh, people became more aware. There was a sense of nationalism that grew. And that's uh, people like Dr. Ad, Dr. Ad, who, who, was, who became the intellectual. He was the one, thanks to him, it was like the whole muralism developed the whole Mexican Mexicanismo, the Mexicanness, the pride of being who who the, 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 the our, our ancestors were as, as an indigenous. They, back then they were they were excavated in Teotihuacan at the time. There were archaeological sites that being they were being uh, found and, and he was basically pointing to the, the fact that we were an indigenous people with great culture. Thanks to him, Diego Rivera is inspired. Uh, you have like the likes of Frida Kahlo, the uh, Siqueiros and they created something called the, the, the Manifesto, which basically is, is, is talking about, um, I think it's worth reading, it's, it, it says, uh, We are with those who seek the overthrow of an old and inhuman system within, within which you, worker of the soil, you produce riches for the overseer and politician while you starve. Within which you, worker in the city, move the wheels of industries, weave the cloth and create with your, money, with your hands and money comforts. With, within which you, Nikan Tlaca, in Tlaca mean indigenous to this continent, heroically abandon your land and give your life and the eternal hope of liberating your race from the degradations and misery of centuries. The makers of beauty must invest their, their greatest efforts in the aim of materializing an art valuable to the people and our supreme objective in art which is today an expression for individual pleasure, is to create beauty that enlightens and steers the struggle. Basically, he's saying stop painting all these, uh, creating all these, uh, this artwork that's just gonna hang in, in, rich, in, people's, in rich people's homes and create artwork out there in the streets, i.e. the murals, to, to educate the, 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 the population at large, the Mexican population. So we, here we have a lot of nationalism being born um, thanks to these artists who basically served as ambassadors to our culture. They went around the, the U.S. and created artwork. As you can see, Diego Rivera ended up in painting beautiful uh, murals in, in Detroit, New York, um, uh, here in California, northern, northern California. So all this for me is learning who I was, learning as, as, I, as I painted the mural, I also, I also learned who I was. As, 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 as a, as a person here who's been on this continent for at least 50,000 years, sense of nationalism also came to me. And I wanted to incorporate all this stuff that I was learning, uh, the heroes of our past. And uh, so I was like, okay, so how are we gonna connect this? How are we gonna put this uh, uh, mirror together? 
I'm learning more history. So I learned of our great ans uh, our ancestors, the great cultures that, that came. Uh, uh, um, some of these cultures developed even before the European cultures developed in Europe. So here we have. I started with with the Olmecs as uh, as you know, being the, the the beginners of our of our of our civilization here. And so we, I put like these quotes like uh, in 2300 BC we were the Olmecs. Olmecas building pyramids, creating gigantic sculptures, mathematics, writing, astronomy too, art, medicine, and calendar, architecture, corn, china, chocolate, calabaza. We were the Olmecs. We are the Olmecs. We are, we are the Olmecas. So you go on to the other. I'm highlighting the the, the major civilizations. Obviously, there were the civil, other civilizations and cultures in between. Well, in 600 BC, we Zapotecas built Monte Albani, pyramid city in the mountain, and mountain and temples reaching to the sky. In 600 BC, we were the Zapotecas, we are the Zapotecas, we are each and every one of these civilizations. In 200 BC, we took the Wakandans, built the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, Grand Boulevards, temples, palaces, art, literature, poetry, masonry, great cities. Uh, we did, we did, we created the Tihuacan, we are the Tihuacan, we are each and every one of these civilizations, reinforcing the idea that we are still these people that created these, these beautiful men of beautiful civilizations in the past. Obviously in the back, if you look in the background, already deteriorated, but you can see the structures, you see Tikal, you see the uh, 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 pyramids of, uh, belonging to the Mexica civilization. You see Ushmal, the Mayan civilization. You see Chichen Itza in the background. You see uh, um, the structure that, that was used as, a, as an astronomy uh, to, to study astronomy because our, 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 the Mayan people were obsessive with, with astronomy. And um, so here we have uh, the Toltec. In 900 AD came the Toltec, the artist of the great speaker, the golden civil maker, the book maker, the philosopher. People of the city of Zula, the Toltecs were the molders of our finer ethics, the makers of our character, the embellishers of our dignity. The, they, these were the Toltecs. We are the Toltecs. We are the Toltecas. We are each and every one of these civilizations. And we continue to final, I guess, major civilization, which is that of the Mexica. From the Mexica, we get Mexicano, we get Mexicano, which is Cano, and we get Mexico. And we, Mexica, built an island, an island city. On a lake with the first of the temple gardens, the largest market in the world, we make some good sad lines, the farmers, agriculture, and the arts, beauty, brilliance, and genius. So the idea was how are you going to connect this glorious past to the, to this other um, present on this side? So basically, the idea was connecting in the center. Obviously, it's um, we had a uh, the issue that we've been having for years is that people come in and they wipe off the they, they tag the, the, the mural and uh, someone came in and uh, they did some real uh, ugly work uh, and this destruction here at the that facing the mural. So I came back and kind of re restored it a little bit, but it just takes a lot of time to, to, to get it back to a home. Um, can you tell us who funded this mural? Who funded this mural? Actually, at the beginning, it was uh, uh, part of the of, of, an, uh, of a group uh, uh, that beautifies the city of LA. They donated about I want to say about two thousand dollars, maybe at, uh, on paints. From there on, that was in nineteen ninety six. From there on, it was just basically been me. Wow. Um, Mural. That's crazy. So I've been coming here for, I could tell you, at least a hundred times or more. How much do you think you've spent out of your own pocket to restore it and keep it up? And I want to say uh, just in brushes, paints, and everything, I don't know, maybe about $10,000. Over more. how many years? Six, uh, well, 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 that's hard to say because if it took me six years to paint this mural, after it was completed and officially back 20, 20 years. Okay. I mean, it's, it's been more than actually, now that I think about it, if, if you really think about it, I, I can hit this mural maybe two or three times now. Oh, Because of the, the whole see. graffiti, I have, I have, I document all the graffiti that's taking place and 
the people just destroying parts of it and 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 i came back and, and worked on it i came back again it's just i spent a lot of time here and, and, and you know, just trying to keep it going from, from being uh, basically destroyed or completely lost because of the graffiti or or the element so the idea was that and here we have one of the most iconic images that we use as a, as a Mexican people, which is that of the Aztec calendar. Or well, more precisely, the Tonalcohuale, or the people who don't really know what, what the Aztec calendar real name is. Or, but the, the one thing we know is not a calendar, it's an actual, uh, it's an instrument of, of measuring the cosmos. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. And so we have here kind of like a visual, like an imagery, like a futuristic. Uh, cities that uh, how would our people if our people got their act together maybe we could develop our own futuristic cities you know uh, we have different, different uh, um, rep replicas of, of what uh, different cities that we developed over the, the years of now you know different time periods also so um, the idea was the children of the future and as they did their City. And it, this is one of the, the one of the highlights of, of the Anahuac culture, uh, where where Tenochtitlan was um, uh, founded on a, 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 in 1325, but it was a, it was a, a city in a lake, and our ancestors had the brilliance of, of creating a city on an artificial lake, and and that that city uh, uh, is calculated from something to 300 um, and 300,000 people inhabitants uh, that city was was uh, had a, a, a crew of people cleaning the city it was, a, it was a, there, there was universities there was hospitals there was there was all this this infrastructure in the city uh, the, from here from this city came out the intellectuals the, the philosophers the, 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 the leaders of, of, of what used to be the or an Awa culture or great people and I wanted to give like a feel of what the city might have looked like in, in its in its full splendor and its, in its, in its height but at the same time I wanted to put in the, some of our people right now incorporate them in, in in this part of the mural but as as being the creators or as being the the people that are going to resurrect this culture this, in, this indigenous Mexica culture that from bring it back from the past and and they're becoming as, as, as they they're learning their knowledge as learning their history they're learning their past they're becoming whole as, as you can see um, through books because they're learning their past because the book is a weapon and they're using it as a weapon because mentally we we become we become you know uh, empowered by, by by obviously by knowledge and more even more so by knowledge of who we are as a, as a people so here we have, you know, the, the idea was that sometimes we have mental blocks, chains that hold us back, and we don't know of our, of our true self or our true identity. So this is, this is what's happening here. You have different things happening here. Um, someone that's already woken up, you know, the, the, the original woke. <laughs> uh, the, 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 they're, they're, they're in full color. They're saying, look, learn these words, pride, dignity, honor. Um, as, as they're learning who they are, their, their, their mental blocks are disappearing, their chains are breaking, but they're getting color. They're becoming, they're becoming uh, regular people, not just uh, drones or not just uh, uh, zombies with, 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 uh, with no culture. Now we're learning who we are. And uh, so here's part, here's part of the, the whole stuff that's working in order for us to develop like uh, a sense of, of, of identity through our past through our glorious past through who we are who we were or 
or what we can be. We could once again become uh, knowledgeable in our, in our in our great cultures and in our identity. So here we have a, a, something that that uh, it's there, but a lot of people don't realize that that there was a big connection between what's called the Nawa and this area here. And, but also a connection between the, the northern uh, uh, part of Anahuac or some Anahuac in the area of what's called the Anasazi area in New Mexico, uh, uh, Pueblo Bonito in Arizona, even uh, to the areas of Cajoquia and, and what's called Missouri. So there was a big connection, a big uh, uh, trade route which was, uh, all this information up northern uh, to the northern areas. Um, a lot of this, yeah, I found a, um, Macau uh, uh, feathers from, from Macau. Macau are not are not from that area, from the northern area, the, the desert areas, but they're from this area. A lot of the Macaus ended up uh, uh, in that area well, because of trade. Uh, the trade went uh, influenced along with the trade. Ideas went up there, worldviews went up there, foods went up there. That's how you get all this corn being born, being. Uh, um, uh, planted in, in, in the northern area. The corn was originally from the area of Puebla, which was uh, domesticated about 9,000 years ago. So, and so you have all this, this uh, history here, what the, the greatness of, of, of Semanawa, or Anawa, but then you also, we get, we get to the area of where the, 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 the theology, or the, or more like the cosmology comes in. And this is what, our, um, I guess this is one of the, the favorite, my favorite uh, sections because here we are explaining how through a cosmological view all these things came into work, all these things came into play. Like um, at first it was the beginning of agriculture. Because of agriculture other, other things started coming other, because uh, the idea was um, at one time, people didn't know how to domesticate certain foods, but what they did, when they realized that they could bring us dead seed and plant it over here instead of going and, and uh, serving as, um, um, you know, picking berries or, or nuts, you could actually grow your own stuff here, and there's more leisure time. The more leisure time to do other things, like, for example, um, mathematics. Beginnings of mathematics. And of course, I incorporate this whole mathematics as, as like counting corn. But the idea was, okay, so you have one dot, two dots, three dots, four dots, five. That's the, the, the this is, is known right now as the Mayan uh, counting system, but actually it was the Olmec Mayan sy uh, counting system. The Olmecs actually were the originators of the counting. Um, if you look at the Mayan counting system right now, we think that, uh, well, obviously the Mayans perfected mathematics. But they, it was really Omic, but see the, the, the dot, the two dots, the three dots, four dots, and then the line will be five. If you add another dot on top of the, that line, we'll need six, two lines, seven, et cetera, et cetera. So from there, mathematics, and we're learning how to write. But we're also calculating the stars, we're measuring the stars with the, 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 the when the, the, the season to, 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 to plant. The, or the corn, the season, uh, planting all these uh, um, tomatoes, calabaza, you know, all these, all these uh, things that are going to sustain us as, 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 a, as a, a growing society. And from here, you have uh, you're educating yourself at the same time. And at the same time, we're also creating architecture because you want to keep. Most likely, what happened. Uh, as you're as you're developing this agriculture, you, you you're having the, the the crops. How are you gonna store these crops? And and the idea could have been where you're storing the crops into like uh, these these shelters, uh, these structures. But at the same time, you get the idea of why not create structures where we could go in there as a, 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 a and keep a, keep away from the elements. So then the beginnings of uh, the first uh, structures being developed, or the first civilization, and then eventually from all this, you get something what's called a society. And then you have the, the ranks. You have the Tlatwani, the, 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 and then you have the, the other ranks that went down all the way to the Masewari, the, the commoners. 
But you have the warrior society, you have the, the, the traders, you have the, the, the other, the, 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 the priests, the leadership. The, this, this is basically the, the structure of a, of a society that, that developed in those times of, uh, with, with our ancestors. Here you have a quadrilateral, well, some of the art that was, uh, that was uh, created by, uh, by the Mexica. Mm -hmm. Here I wanted to incorporate the, the idea of corn, corn being uh, uh, like a, a wild uh, grass at one time, and it developed through, through agricultural engineering into what it is today. Uh, un maíz, una mazorca. As you can see, some of the stuff still needs work. It's been deteriorating. But here you have the, also the, the wire, um, the wire structure of what uh, what the warriors looked like back in, in the, the Mexica time. But you also have the, the Mayans, also for the Maya warrior was the, the Maya Jaguar. I wanted to kind of like, do this, uh, incorporate the, 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 the eagle and the jaguar, only because the eagle, you find the eagle flying in the sky, you find the jaguar down in the earth, the duality, earth, sky, and again, uh, earth, sky, here you have some of the warriors, uh, the impact warriors, the Mexica uh, uh, warriors, the, the, the Guachi, um, because there was a warrior society, uh, this is not a Mexica, this is a Wichotinka. This one actually took me about 12 to 14 hours to create. This is Zapoteco, uh, in the area of the Zapoteca. Um, another Mixteca, Mixteca uh, princess warrior. This is a Tlaxcala warrior, a Mexica. Women, because there were women warriors at the time. This was like a, an idea that obviously with all the graffiti and stuff, I gotta come back and redo this. But the idea was, as you're waking up from your, uh, from, our, from our sleep, the lack of knowledge, the lack of self-awareness, the lack of identity, uh, we're waking up, we're rising. It's kind of like the idea that we're enslaved to ignorance because we don't know who, who we are as a people. We embrace other identities. And so little by little, we're, we're trying to get up there. See? We're trying to get up on our feet. The walk thing. And uh, light is becoming in, you know, into our lives. And that's what we're becoming, you know, from, from just simple black and white, dull. So we're, we're rising, we're getting off our feet. I mean, on, onto, our, onto our feet. And we're, we're, uh, we're pointing to the, to what the problem is, the invasion of our continent, colonization. Oh, those are the boats. Yes, and, and uh, so you see the, the, the girls, she's getting up and then, you know, you know there's books. So he's got a book. He has a, she has a book. So there, that book is becoming, and they're morphing into warriors. They're becoming warriors for our people. So that book is becoming like a mafawi. They're becoming a, a weapon. Because a book is a weapon. If, if you, um, especially for us, if we educate ourselves on our, on our true identity, it becomes a powerful weapon. So that's the idea of the, of the Anahuac hero that uh, we're, we're becoming again, we're trying to embrace back our identity, our indigenous identity. We're trying to become who, who we once were as a great people and, and uh, em embrace this glorious past that we once had. So that concludes our the Anahuac hero tour. <laughs> thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Let me just go down here and get the rest of it.
feather thing on, on, on their, on their uh, crown there. But all this, I have to do is put 